Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we are going to try and do a little bit of crafting. I say try, because we're in a bit of an unfamiliar setting as such. So I've already warned the household to maybe not come into this section of the house, but this house, like if somebody's upstairs and they bang on the floor, you, you hear it. Like not bang, but walk heavily, you can hear it. So I apologize if there's any outside noise. Most of it will be, um, sped up anyway so I'll have music over the top of it but predominantly I like using that word I don't get to use it very often we're going to be doing crafting with these bad boys so this I work my main job I would say um because I generally do quite a lot uh, different types of things um my main job is working basically depending on where you come from it's front of house serving food restaurant work, um, service work, you know, whatever you're about, you know what I'm on about. I'm the person that turns up with a pad, takes your order and then buggers off and gets the rest of it sorted. Um, I've also worked in kitchens, um, doing food and stuff like that as well, cooking, prepping, that sort of thing. Um, so these, usually you'll have things like pickled onions or um, beetroot or, you know, the they usually house large vegetables that have been pickled of some description and then they get binned and they're a lovely shape and it seems such a waste to bin bins. So we're on a craft recycle upcycle for this and I've done a few of these for uh, Ruth and Ali makes for our store and so far I've probably made about, about 10 of them maybe at tops. Uh, and this is an introduction might be a bit long because I'm just going to show you. So this is the standard ones that I get from most of my workplaces uh, and they donate them in a sense because otherwise they just go in the bin. And then I wash them, clean them so that they don't have anything left in them. I get rid of the lids, they usually have like metal twist lids. I get rid of the lids because these are going to act as big juicy vases, I think. So those are the usual standard ones. Oh, a bit noisy. Um, our next door neighbour has donated some knee size and as you can see sometimes this sticky residue takes a little bit to get off. So I won't be working on these ones today, I need to put them through again to try and get rid of this. Though I do have some is it acetone um, and some turps I could try for that. So, But these are other standard like these big jars um, from like I said if you work in a place that goes out and gets bulk. Uh, food and stuff like that to sell, then they usually have these massive great big jars. It just seems such a waste and they're such a nice shape. You know, in the other week I got gifted um, some sunflowers. Nobody's ever bought me sunflowers before and they were huge and they were beautiful and I was sitting there thinking I haven't got anything to put them in. And these were perfect. It's nice, it's big, it's supportive, you get plenty of water in there. It also lets it open so that you can see when the water needs changing. But they don't turn out like this, I don't just sell them like this, so today is going to be showing you what they turn into, you know? So let's see if you like what these turn into and I will leave you with some music and I will get on with the process and I will speed it up so you don't have to go through all of it because this does take a while and the drying times and everything as well and I will show you one at the end that is already pre-dried, finished and done and I'll show you how they turn out. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Uh, if you need any help or want to order anything from Ruth and Ali Makes, uh, then by all means, get in touch with us in the comments and we'll get back to you. We're also on Instagram as well. And if you want a quicker comeback, you'll find Ruth and Ali Makes on Instagram because Ruth flipping monitors that thing. Uh, so she'll get back to you straight away. We don't ship internationally um, at the moment because we're only a small UK business. But um, let us know what you think. You can let me know where we are at fairs and that sort of thing. And I will see you at the end. Bye now.
Okay guys, so that's some of the process they have ramped. God, I wish I could work as fast as it does on time lapse. That would be amazing. The production line would be epic. However, I can't. So I'm just gonna show you what I've done in real time um, so far. So it looks a bit interesting at the minute. It always does. Um, and I generally try and work with what the brush shapes are. So whatever my brush really makes works for me. So once this, this first initial stage is done, I will show you as well. I did try and show you at the beginning of the time lapse, but some of the items that I use. Um, for this, for me, I'm reasonably novice at this one, but for me, I have a lot of paint brushes. I have some very good quality paint brushes um, that I use for my watercolors and my inks. Um, but for my, no acrylics, but for glass paints, I have picked a set of brushes that are not great quality, they're low grade. So I don't mind if they get damaged and gummed up and whatever, because they will with these. So you've probably seen me as well. At the moment, I found the most effective way of cleaning them at the time is to use, strangely enough, wipes. Uh, you obviously can't put water on them and stuff like that. They do not um, wash like your normal brush would if you're using inks or um, watercolors and things like that because they're not water-based. However, there are some cleaning fluids that you can use, but I suggest using them after uh, you've finished doing your work. Um, for quick, clean sort of changeover between color if you're using the same brush, I just use a wipe. Uh, you, and because they're essentially what I call body wipes, they have stuff in there that will take it off enough for you to then work onto the next color without it bleeding. So that was one of them. This is another one. Again, you can't really see what I'm aiming for at this point, and you won't do until it's finished, to be fair. But these are just, if I can show you on here. So this is sort of just padding the brush stroke with whatever my brush is loaded up with. Um, and then I sort of work with the shapes that I want. And that's how it goes. Uh, give me two seconds, I'll be back with you and I'll show you one of more, well, one or two of the more finished products. Okay, two seconds. I feel like saying that moment, you know, like, and here's one I made earlier, because there is. I made several earlier and these are a couple of them. And you'll see it looks a bit more put together. You know what I mean? But it, it ends up initially, you're just trying to find how you feel about it with the paint. Because if you're wanting a strong look, you layer up these paints. Um, so you have to wait for the drying and then you have to keep layering up. Also, those are the paints that I've used this time. I got these on Amazon, I think it was at the time. But these are the paints that I've been using. I also got gifted a, I basically request materials if I'm having birthday presents, I'll be like it with materials. I got some really nice um, paints and pots, but again, in the packing frenzy, I have no idea what they are. And I was also using, and will continue to use, the pens as well. So I've done myself, this isn't actually on there, but I've done myself a colour chart. I know one's down there, but I actually like to see what the colours look like. So I do my own colour chart for each pack. And then these are pretty good. The only thing is, obviously with this kind of thing, they tend to dry out really fast. You have to work fast. You have to get the paint on there. Um, and then I suggest using the pens afterwards but the pens themselves dry out as well. So, for example, they are like a close, I don't think I can close up on this one, but here we go. They're kind of like a pushed nib. So obviously when you first get them, they're white and you press in and you wait until it feeds down into it, give it a good shake. But I would, the problem is in between uses, these dry out and they get sticky. So when you go to use them again, they either completely lock or you have to soak them in something to kind of leave leave them up for essential reasons uh, there's no other way of putting it so that you can do that again or you can push the. Sh this is going to get worse you can push the shaft back in and it will eventually release you can keep maneuvering it and it will eventually release my my mate who doubles up as my mechanic says that there's no way i would ever be able to work as a mechanic because the place is rife with innuendo and you have to be able to do it straight faced and I can't. So this one is not the first one I was going to show you but this one's the closest to hand. So this one is the lavender vase, La lavender and cornflower vase and obviously I finished them off with some ribbon. 
And if you imagine that with a big bunch of um, flowers in, either similar to the colour scheme that's on the vase or a different, totally contrasting colour scheme, wildflowers, then they look really, really pretty. And again, they're just so useful. You do get sealed, so I use a spray to seal them. This is one of the first ones I ever did. Um, and I've sold these sell pretty well, the cornflowers, the poppies, and the um, wheat um, field type of look. Basically, your summer vase. You can see the light is going for us, so I'm going to sign off on this one. But those two vases that I've started today, they will be left over the next 24 hours to dry, probably very fast in this weather, to be honest. Uh, and make sure that you only, with these, I really, really recommend that you try your hardest only to put out the paint that you think you're gonna use. You can always add to that if you run out, but you can't put it back in the tube and it dries really fast. It, it doesn't dry, dry really fast, but it's sticky and gets gummy and then that will affect how the textures go as far as it goes for putting it on the glass. So, yeah, that's basically it. If you like the video, if you like the vases, get in touch. If you don't, you don't have to, but thanks for the review. <laughs> and I will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.